How's it going guys, it's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I've got some more mods to test out, they've added a couple of new things, they've added a few back as well that they removed uh, yesterday, stuff like the P16. Um, yeah, this is the uh, JBE kind of modded uh, Lodestar, and it's pretty cool to be honest. Uh, this is the sort of setup I've gone for it so far, I quite still like in the uh, big, big wide monster truck tyres, but as far as all the add-ons and everything it's got, as you can see, it's kind of got the rear end of the uh, F750 and with that you kind of get all the cage, uh, the roof rack, the stuff that's in the pickup bed, uh, it's also got the bumper, it's got a lot more bumpers from all various different trucks. Uh, yeah the tyres, I believe they're 55 inch tyres, so pretty decent. One nice thing as well with the uh, the Lodestar, even though it's a scow, it's always had the, uh, the truck engine options and it's more importantly it's got the truck gearboxes rather than the scout gearboxes. So there is a JBE kind of custom transmission. It says a work in progress. I'll be honest, I didn't try it. I'm not, I'm not saying it's good or bad or otherwise. I just, uh, I like the high range option anyway. So that's the one I went for. You've got eight gears. It's very nice in high range, particularly with the bigger tires as well. Um, yeah, as I've said before in this game, generally speaking, the bigger the tires, the faster you go in various gears, gearboxes or whatever, because it's just one rotation of the wheel. Uh, makes you travel further so yeah between the bigger tires and the high range gearbox it's a very nice truck to drive it's pretty stable as well you can definitely if you go pretty fast and like just fling it around a corner you can uh, drift and roll it but overall it is pretty well planted to its wheels so it's not really like a major issue especially if you're going slow it's uh, not trying to tip or anything all the time even though I have got the roof rack on and everything at the minute Looks pretty cool like that. <laughs> I always like them like that. And uh, most importantly though, if you did damage the suspension, it actually does drive along just fine. It's not scraping its chassis on the floor or anything. So you could get by if, uh, if that happened to you and you've run out of repair points. Yeah, there's a few other things you can add on the back as well. Um, just various other add-ons. A lot of stuff that was on like the, what was it, the TUZ, like the Warthog and Taz, uh, like the little mini repair add-on and stuff, the single slot sideboard, uh, I believe, oh no actually, it might have been the F750, I'm not sure, maybe the Lodestar, yeah, in fact, I think the Lodestar only used to have like the small pickup bed, which you can still have now, the little maintenance add-on that kind of made it look like a mini fire truck, and uh, yeah, probably a bare chassis now, so you've got a lot of stuff from like, yeah, the Taz, the Warthog and the F750 all been added on. It kind of reminds me, someone I think Jason was saying in the uh, comments the other day that it'd be pretty cool in this game if they added uh, like Bigfoot essentially. And uh, yeah, I agree. And then funnily enough though, this sort of does remind me of Bigfoot or the very early version. Like if you uh, look into how Bigfoot, the monster truck, came to be, it was originally they just kind of looked similar to this. They stuck some big tyres on a, a pickup truck it got popular, they kind of drove it over a few cars and uh, it sort of went from there and then I think obviously they went all out and added like the world's biggest tyres and all sorts of stuff but I think they got off an old like Antarctic or Arctic or whatever, some like snow vehicle that was built to go in the Arctic and because uh, it was built to go over snow it was built with like massive wide soft tyres and uh, I think that's where they got the tyres from to put on Bigfoot so it'd be pretty cool just as a, a random thing if you could have something like that Arctic uh, explore thing as well but yeah this to me has a bit of a feel of it like uh, the early Bigfoot obviously it's got various different raised suspension I think the two main ones I've been choosing is there's the one that's raised the most and then there's like the JBE flex version which I think is like the same height but I assume it's got more sponginess and uh, stuff to it yeah as far as I mean it drove through the water just fine uh, it drove all up and off-road in the grip on it is pretty nice so uh, yeah, that's just handy. Like I said, when I was driving that tank yesterday, uh, that's the one thing it just felt like it was missing. It needs more grip so it could climb up more stuff. This thing was motoring up quite a lot of the, uh, the hills and slopes just fine. Driving over those slabs I just went over, <laughs> they're always a bit sketchy and a bit wobbly. It can go anyway. You don't really get too much choice where you're aiming it when you're driving across them. As you're just bouncing off each slab, it kind of flicks your truck all over the place. And yeah, going across it, it's quite short wheelbase, so it's kind of uh, going in and out of every hole. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, yeah, but overall, I mean, again, it's not smashing itself to pieces. I already had a popped tyre before we got here. It's 
quite nice as well on the steering, even though when you go pretty fast it starts to get understeery, but there's more bordering on now, that's just the mechanics of the game rather than this thing. But when you're just cruising along at lower speeds, and yeah, the main thing I like about it is this kind of, well, it's an extremely good version of the load star. it feels like the same with pretty much all of these JBE versions, like, um, yeah, even stuff like the Paystar and the Freightliner, they're not really my favourite trucks in the scheme of things, but the JBE versions are very nice, they're very usable, they've just got more, yeah, variety, more options, more scale and scope as far as, like, going from stock to maxed out. I mean, this thing at the minute, I've got it pretty maxed out, I think it just had all the original truck engines, but it's always had a nice bit of power, because it is a truck engine in a Scout. Um, but yeah, you just take it, like I said, to this kind of level, but when you buy it, it's still a stock version, I can still make it completely stock, I don't think this is an unrealistic version anyway, there's kind of like, people seem to have two definitions of what they define as unrealistic in this game, you've kind of got, to me I would say unrealistic is like when it starts to defy physics or just behaves in a way that clearly isn't real, I'd say that's unrealistic, some people would say like a version of a truck that's customised to a point it's beyond the traditional stock version you'd get in the real world, they'd start to look at that as unrealistic, which is fair enough, I wouldn't say either's right or wrong, it's just there's kind of two uh, sort of angles to approach from. Um, yeah, for me, I'm quite happy to, like I said, this is clearly now a custom version of a Lodestar, you ain't really going to buy one like this stock, however, in real life you can take it this far, and it's not, that's where to me it's not unrealistic, it's just a custom version, and uh, yeah, it's nice to have that chance to actually customise things all the way to the limit or you can tone them back a bit and this thing's definitely got plenty of power with this sort of setup but I could go for an off-road gearbox and so on so I could always tone down the speed and all that sort of stuff but yeah I mean it's rallying along these uh, cliffs pretty nicely I was messing around in this quite a lot tonight to be honest again I was planning on doing a review on something but I thought just before I do I'll take these out and have a little play around I'm I'm gonna go and test this and then the uh, the Scout 800 as well They've added like a modded version of that. And then there's an army truck as well I had a little blast with. But yeah, I mean, I, I was staying in this thing for quite a while. See, grip-wise, it got up that hill pretty well. The rocks are still a bit slippery. I think that's just... They're a bit slippery in this game. I can't think of a whole lot that does just claw its way up the uh, the rocks. And yeah, it picks up a bit of damage here and there if you get a bit of an unlucky bounce. But again, that's more the mechanics of the game than this thing. Um... Nice thing though, because it has got all the various different add-on options and everything. There's a lot of variety of uh, things that bring points along. Like, I quite like this setup anyway. The uh, the F750 for me, I really like it as a scout, but it's always felt really slow. This thing, I would say between well between the F750 and this, I certainly prefer the speed and power of this, uh, the stock version I'm on about at the minute. Um, I'd say the F750 is just a better equipped, all-round kind of. It, it feels pretty good, like the gearbox and it's nice, the uh, the steering's pretty nice, but it was always a little bit lacking on the power. Um, yeah, the fact that this thing is, like I said, in some ways it feels a lot like the F750, just with an even better gearbox and engine and everything now. It's like putting the truck version of stuff in the F750, but the fact that you can have the, uh, the rear pickup bed and that is pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I did a little jump there, rolled on my wheels. Tipping it over though, once you start pulling it with a winch, I was skidding along my roof a little bit, but overall it, uh, it gets back to its wheels pretty well. Which is nice, because it's a shame with some trucks when, uh, yeah, once you do roll, they're an absolute nightmare to get back to the wheels, but considering this thing I've put the biggest wheels on and they sit pretty wide, it was, uh, yeah, pretty hassle free. Again, I, uh, I quite like it <laughs> when it's like this, but it's nice to know it still can handle it and drive along. So pretty nice speed to it overall. And again, it's not trying to just bob around and uh, jump on its roof. It kind of does want to stay on its wheels. I think that's two benefits you get from these sort of wheels though, is one, they seem to add a bit of weight to the truck itself, so that tries to sit low down. Uh, yeah, they also sit wider. But there was loads of different options for tyres, you could even put the uh, Cat 770G tyres on, so they're like single fronts, the dual rears with the sort of yellow cat kind of painted alloys, but uh, I believe they're sort of unique tyres that uh, have sort of special 
stats and everything. There was also that I thought was pretty cool. There was uh, various different sizes of the Hummer tyres, like the yeah the Hummer H2, including up to 55 inch tyres. So uh, that's pretty cool as well. They sat a bit narrower than this. I didn't try them out in the end because again there's like I don't know <laughs> 20, 30, 40 different choices of tyres. I could be here for days if I was trying every tyre out. Cutting through the water and stuff, motors along pretty nicely because it sits nice and high. Uh, yeah, as I was saying yesterday, I think it was, or the day before, once your chassis gets in the water, that's when it kind of slows you down again. But as long as it's just your wheels cutting through, it goes through there pretty well. And because this thing does sit quite nice and high, it was uh, not having any trouble for the most part. Sorry, there's a little glitch there. See, it's all ticking along pretty nicely here. When I get a bit further up here, though, once it's like the chassis goes in the water as well, it doesn't like it as much. You can see, I'm sure it's now. I drop it into low gear and it just absolutely, like, um, yeah, there's just not enough revs or anything there. It'd be interesting to see. A bit like they've done, uh, that's it, what's it? Frog, the modder guy that did the, uh, again, what's it bloody called? The Titanius Maximus or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, the suspension feels really good on that, and it'd be quite nice. I don't even know if it's possible, but if there was a gearbox that, rather than uh, when you put it in low at the minute, it seems to just be a, a speed and a rev cap. I don't even know if it has its own gear ratio. It just more stops you being able to floor it in a way. It's a bit like, as you've seen then, when I went in the water, it just cut the revs rather than did much else. Um, yeah, having a gearbox that sort of genuinely drops down into a low set of gears but still give you the full set of revs. That'd, uh, that'd be pretty nice. But again, that's like the mechanics of the game, the gearbox in this truck. I personally really like the high range. And again, I'm more like the high range while I'm speaking of rev caps and stuff because with the off-road gearbox, I think they've to make it more of an off-road versus a high-speed gearbox, they've just upped the rev caps a bit in some situations, and yeah, a lot of the times it's just kind of cock-blocking your engine rather than actually giving you better power or applying that power or anything. Uh, anyway, next up though is this thing, the little Scout 800, and uh, yeah, already I could tell this is a lot cooler. Again, put the big old nice wide tyres on it, but it sits very planted, drives along pretty nicely. Because this is a proper Scout that's got the uh, the Scout option of gearboxes. It's got, what is it, the Freeway or the Snowrunner version. I think I'm in the Freeway gearbox. Uh, I, in fact, I think I took both out. I'm sure there was a JBE sort of custom gearbox with this as well. But yeah, I mean, all things considered, this isn't a bad speed. I could drive along like this when I'm just cruising around and exploring maps. Certainly at this speed, you're not going to have any issues where... Uh, you start just skidding around. I'm not sure, like, I could be wrong on this, this is just a gut feeling, but I've kind of been thinking about it recently, when you get to high speeds in this game, I'm not sure if one of the ways they apply speed in this game is, like, the slower you go in, the more terrain resistance there is, and as you increase the speed, I'm wondering if it kind of dials down the terrain resistance as well, to kind of help you go faster, but then that's why when you get over a certain speed, it seems to have dialed the terrain grip or resistance or whatever down so much that you just start it's like you're ice skating then once you're into a like top gear or if you've managed to do the Jeff Special on any of the trucks it doesn't matter what surface you're on you just you're skiing around like you're uh, yeah drifting on ice whereas this thing doesn't really have that issue it's all yeah it's fast enough that it, I wouldn't get bored in it As well, oh, just while I was rabbiting away, uh, it did a little jump off the thing. It didn't take any damage or anything. I think that's the first anything I've jumped off there so far that just landed and took it rather than trying to semi-delete itself. In fact, maybe that Titanius Maximus thing uh, might have landed, actually, without any issues. <laughs> yeah, the horn actually does break them things. <laughs> they could do with toning down them little barricades. They absolutely delete some of the trucks. Going through the water as well, doing pretty decent. Like you say, you can definitely feel it's a lot more planted with, uh, certainly with these wheels on anyway. And I'm quite enjoying these wheels because for ages in the game we've kind of had some of the muds sit wider. I mean, you get the custom muds on a few trucks, but for the most part you don't really. But um, yeah, wide muds, like the custom muds on a lot of trucks was kind of renowned for it back then. 
rather than cut through the mud, they kind of wade on top of it, but then they have to, you sort of have to wheel spin and claw your way back down into the mud to find grippier terrain underneath. Uh, so I ended up favouring yet narrower tyres, like the chain for example, have generally been my go-to. They're just hassle-free, fit and forget, they work on every terrain, so yeah, it just, they're, they're never any hassle, they never really catch you out. Um, but now, with some of these wider, is it the quasi-muds or something they're called? It, yeah, even though they sit wide, they kind of ride over the mud rather than having to immediately wade through them and dig their way through. Uh, I rolled the thing, sent in a cat CT680, that couldn't even cross the water for some reason. Then I tried to send in Bruce, but I couldn't get up the top of there because his chin was too massive. And uh, yeah, of course, sending a goddamn horse for a vehicle. The job is done in mere seconds. I don't even know why I tried to send anything but the goddamn professional, because that's what I've learnt on this game. <laughs> send in a horse, and the problem is solved pretty damn quickly. But yeah, overall, I mean, it's nice to have a scout that uh, feels pretty good in this game. I've always been with most of the scouts. Obviously, I do, I do love me a bit of a loaf time. Um, the load stars also, I think, always been a pretty decent. Scout, but again, it's had the truck and engine and gearbox, so that's kind of the whole uh, drivetrain situation and everything that felt better. Uh, yeah, the F750 is pretty cool as well. The Tatrin obviously is pretty bloody good, but that's kind of a scout just for the sakes of grouping it somewhere. It's uh, a bit of a specialist scout. It's obviously like an APC eight wheel thing. Um, but yeah, for the most part, like this, uh, what they bloody called the Marshall, the Don 71. Even the Hummer, to a degree, they were like they could be fun for a little bit, but there was just rarely a reason to take them out. The reason why I do a lot of scouting in trucks is because I can scout just the same as I can in a scout. But then when I'm at the other side of the map, there might be a mission to do where I need to grab a bit of cargo, and I can do that with a truck. Whereas with a scout, you're just limited to scouting, and the fact that they weren't that quick or they're not that decent through mud and everything normally was kind of like. There's, no, there's just no reason to bring one, and even though you could take like a cargo trailer and that, a, a two-slot trailer on the uh, on any scout, the trailer itself is pretty terrible. So that's kind of just another thing that was holding the scouts back. I really can't stand the uh, trailers. I've shown it before in various videos uh, when I've been at the quarry and that. I ended up taking even with the scouts, I took uh, the two-slot truck trailer basically, and I could tow that up the quarry hills easier than I could drag that. Uh, yeah, one or two slot trailers. They just have such tiny wheels and they don't seem to turn very well. They just, uh, yeah, it's like trying to drag a little anchor. They'd be better off if they were just sleds <laughs> and you could actually drag them along. A bit like those porter cabins that we got in uh, Lake Coft or whatever it was. But yeah, this thing, I could actually see me, uh, yeah, doing a bit of scouting in this. Maybe on some of the uh, modded maps I could take it out or something because... Oh, well, I haven't really got anything left to scout on on the normal maps. Well, that does remind me, though. They, uh, they've they released a bit of information that the Phase 3 update, I think that's on the PTS server now, which is on the PC, like the test server. Um, yeah, so uh, a couple of weeks to a month, maybe, until we see it on console. It seems to be the rough estimate between when it gets uh, yeah released on the test server versus when we get it, but that'd be pretty cool, it's bringing login back to the game and everything. And there'll be two new maps, I think it's in Wisconsin this time. I don't know what sort of maps they are, I'm kind of hoping they're a little bit more like, uh, what's it called, Michigan and everything. The snowy maps, they're good, but because they just go over the top at the minute with the super snow, it's, yeah, I've had a lot of snowy maps by now, obviously we've got the whole Alaskan section, but then when they added uh, Lake Coffin and Amandra, they're both snowy, and then the recent maps as well, Big Salmon Peaks, pretty much all snowy. Flooded Foothills is like half and half, so yeah, it'd be nice to get a few more sort of normal muddy maps again. And uh, yeah, another one to test out is this army truck, which again, is pretty cool. It's got a few different add-ons on the back, by the way, as you can see at the minute, I've stuck some cargo in there. Um, it's got like an army sort of, you know, where it's got like the army canvas over like a little steel frame. Yeah, and that's got a lot of repair point. Oh, well, about 850, I think it might have been, or something like that. So, pretty decent. And uh, yeah, it's just a pretty good feeling truck when I was driving around. It's got some nice grip and everything. It's not too tippy. It's a little bit 
I suppose the closest to the normal trucks we've got is probably like the ANK38, but yeah, I'd probably say already, and I quite like the ANK38. But yeah, this feels pretty decent, just feels like a more planted version, and it's a, yeah, feels sort of very classic army truck, but in a good way. No issues uh, going through the water there. There's not a whole lot of tyres or anything to choose from, but the tyres that you do get are decent enough. I think the ones I've got on it are, I think they were called Michelin ones, or Michelin, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, studded versions though, so you could get the mud versions, or this. Uh, yeah, there's only about like five or ten tyres to choose from, and that includes like the smaller ones as well. And yeah, climbed up there pretty nicely, even though I've got cargo on, I don't think it's particularly heavy cargo. But it's cargo, <laughs> it counts. But yeah, as you can see, it's especially up here where I'm sort of weaving and uh, winding around the different tracks. This is like, even there alone, the ANK would have been very sketchy. The ANK has felt better since I've added the ability for the custom muds, but then coupled with flooded foothills, the custom muds just really don't do well in mud for some reason. And there is a version actually, I'll, uh, I'll show you pretty soon, with the Lodestar that I was testing, the JVE, it, there was the custom muds that you get on like the Tager and stuff, but I'm sure it said they were like the JVE version, and I gave them a go, and yeah, they feel a lot better, a lot more, again, just realistic, they don't feel overpowered, like they're god mode tyres or anything, but the, uh, yeah, the custom muds are just really not that good in the base game. Not as good as they should be, they seem overly held back. Nearly got it, not quite. So of course, that's sending a goddamn professional. As you can see, he's able to cross rivers. Which is pretty decent for a scout, because, well, even I couldn't get the bloody Cat CT680 over here for some reason, but... Yeah, a lot of the scouts float anyway, or if not, they're uh, not too keen on staying uh, planted. And this river current is pretty strong. Definitely moving me over to the right a little bit, but see. I've got damn horse of a vehicle. You can lead a horse to water. And you'll gallop across it. Just checking his uh, rescuing skills. They're still up to scratch. Bit of loaf training. See. Mere seconds and we're done. And uh, yeah, overall though, I quite like this truck. I quite like the look of it. Uh, I quite like the way it handles. It feels pretty planted. It's got nice, nice enough tyres. Decent enough suspension, decent enough power. Gears aren't all awkward and horrible or anything. It uh, ticks along pretty nicely. A little test over the concrete sections. Again, I'm trying to steer with it, but <laughs> these kind of tell you where you're going. But it's flexing around pretty nicely. It's not deleting itself at two mile an hour. little glitch there. Apologies for that. Gets me every time. <laughs> it's a bit of damage that time. It's got a snorkel as well at the back, like all the way up to the roof, so underwater shenanigans approved. It's one of those trucks sometimes you get a little bit stuck in a section. It might even do it along here somewhere. And you just kind of keep it floored like I'm doing now. And then it just finds the power after a few seconds. I can't remember what other truck did that. I remember explaining it in a review. <laughs> I just can't remember which one. But again, that's nice though. It's better than it doesn't just tap out. It's uh, If you give it a few seconds, it puts a bit more effort in. Rather than, yeah, just being as if it's thrown its hands in the air and said, well, <laughs> I thought it. Can't do it. And going up here, pretty nice grip. That's pretty decent. As I said about that tank I tested yesterday, a few people don't seem to like that tank, which uh, I thought, apart from I'd like a bit more grip in it, but I thought it was alright. I wasn't really expecting anything that was like, you know, amazing and sort of highly useful in the game and everything anyway. It's an old World War II tank, so I kind of figured it was just going to be some slow thing. It's just kind of cool if you want to drive a tank around, then it's, it's a tank. <laughs> Obviously, if it was like a, uh, an M1 Abrams or something, some type of modern tank, I'd, uh, yeah be expecting more out of it, but I think that was the... Uh, someone was saying I was a bit lenient on it, I saw... I, 
I didn't really have an amazingly high bar set for it anyway, and I don't mean that in a bad way, it's just, yeah, I never figured I'd, it'd be a potential one I'd be, you know, towing trailers around and sort of flying around as a daily driver kind of thing, it was just a, uh, I'm not really going to keep it long term, but yeah, for a little lap in a tank it was, it was fun for half an hour. As someone was saying earlier, which would be pretty cool, uh, what's it called, the Cat D9 is it, or something like the big, uh, I was going to say the big caterpillar thing, like a tracked bulldozer type thing. Pretty uh, pretty old school, you kind of see them everywhere, pretty hefty, heavy duty thing. But yeah, it'd be pretty good if they uh, had one, something like that. And again, goddamn professional, he saves the day. He dug in pretty well. He even buried a tyre in the map. And there's a goddamn professional, prepared to go ball joint deep when the situation requires it. <laughs> Handbrake though. That could do with a bit of a, a bit of tightening. Do you see? Just got damn horse with a vehicle and you never have to worry when you got a loaf. Get out of it, rock. You get your own loaf. This one's mine. Oh yeah, I just went for another grip test. <laughs> but again, it's pretty nice that stuff can uh, just climb up there as easy it does as easy as it does. So yeah, that's the truck. I'd recommend it. And then now I'm just going for a little blast. In the uh, F No, <laughs> the Lodestar. Uh, yeah, this is on one of my plays, playthroughs now. The middle one. Not I. I've still not been risking too many of these mods on my uh, last playthrough. And you can see though, these are like the custom mods, but they're apparently the JBE version. And yeah, they well they seem to be because they work a lot nicer than the uh, normal ones. It even was doing pretty well on them trees. <laughs> Started to get a little bit bit of a wheelie going in the end, so I wasn't nailing all of them. Um, there is though that I'll show you pretty soon. You can get a weighted bumper for this, and I'm not actually sure, I didn't test it, but that might help keep the nose down for the trees. Although this was just yeah, me messing around, it's not really a, a serious issue. The fact that it can knock through at least one or two trees is uh, pretty nice, because if you ever get a little bit squirrely, and have to ram a forest out your way, these things do happen from time to time. It's nice to know it can uh, handle the situation. That tree ain't going nowhere. So it stays pretty planted on its wheels, there's a lot of stuff there that could have sort of landed on that awkward angle and just flicked itself over, but yeah, overall it's uh, pretty good. I'll definitely be keeping one of these around. Oh, by the way as well, they've removed uh, the heavy wrecker, but apparently that's going to be back pretty soon. It's just, I think the modder has to remove it and then they're updating it and then it probably has to go through like an approval process and all of it again, but yeah, that should be back pretty soon. It'd be quite nice in this game if they had like a little news window, just, uh, I don't know, if it was in the settings in that codex bit or something, just that, you know, add general notes and bits of information of things they've done, or things they're going to do or whatever. Not that it really matters with that wrecker, All, the only thing I would have done, if I'd known it was going to get removed for a bit, I probably would have unsubbed to it just while it's gone, so it frees up a bit of room to download some other mods, but I kind of, yeah, I'm trying to hoard in my free memory space with the air mods, because I've heard a few people are having sort of some issues with uh, it saying insufficient memory, even if there isn't. I did notice that, I'm sure it was that army truck actually, when I downloaded that. I'm sure it said it cost me about 500 megabytes, but it only knocked two or 300 off, so I'm not sure which one was inaccurate or if it's just taken a little while to update it properly. Uh, yeah, driving through here, I was going to cut through the water. This thing floats normally anyway, like the fully stock version does. It appeared as I was going in there, once it was deep enough. <laughs> Again, that's what she said. Um, yeah, the fronts kind of started to float, I just couldn't get any grip, couldn't fight the current anymore. You can see that bumper though, when I flick to it, the f starts to dip down, because it's kind of, it is actually weighted. So I brought that back to see if that made much of a difference or anything. And it did a bit, I still think it's set at least to a degree wanting to float a bit but yeah the current here is a bit awkward that's why I'm kind of cutting on a little bit of a diagonal because uh, it does fight you quite a lot but it's that there was absolutely no chance of getting over here the first time with a weighted bumper it's just about getting there 
a little bit risky. I was like, oh no, don't tip, but it stayed pretty planted. Found some grip in the end, and we made it. So it's good, it's an improvement, but I was thinking there's more that can be done, of course. Wear a professional like a hat. Another weight distribution loaf. He has his uses, I'll give him that. <laughs> Stays on there pretty well considering. Just balancing. Sheer willpower is what's keeping him on there. <laughs> it's probably the most careful I've driven in a pretty long while. It's nice to drive like a maniac every now and then though. <laughs> well, every now and then. Most of the time. So it fell off. Can he make his way back on? Oh yes. I mean, it is just a goddamn horse or a vehicle. I don't know why, but everything I want to do in the loaf, it does. And it's just one of those trucks, <laughs> one of those vehicles. Just yeah. Everything I do, it indulges me and lets me do it. And it's just always a good time. So we'll see if this helps me uh, cross the river. It's like a weighted bumper 2.0. I mean, let's be fair, it's basically a roof rack. That's what he's pretending to be. Doing a pretty bloody good job as well, if I do say so myself. So, already massively improved. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I, was like, I think I hit a rock. I was like, oh no. Give it a jiggle. Oh, so close. But then I realise it doesn't matter. Loaf's done his job. We made it over the river. He knows what he's doing. He doesn't need to be a weight distribution loaf anymore. He even gets the right winch point and we're off. That's not a professional. I don't know what is. Yeah, going out with a pair of these, I could imagine I could get up to quite a few things. That F750 pickup bed sits quite far over the back, but yeah, overall it's just a very good mod. I, uh, I highly recommend this one. That Scow 800 was very nice as well, and the army truck actually, because uh, all three of them are pretty cool. But yeah, that's about it for today though. I hope you enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Get yourself a load start and a loaf course, and I'll be back soon.